In this video, we'll look at automating deployments to services like Kubernetes Engine and Cloud Run using GitHub Actions. In a previous video, which we'll link to in the description, we looked at the automated build portion of this, creating a Docker image and building and pushing it to Google's artifact registry using GitHub Actions. However, in this video, we're going to focus on taking those artifacts that are in artifact registry and pushing them out to Google Kubernetes Engine. While we won't explicitly cover the configurations for using Cloud Run, the concepts are quite similar and the integration between artifact registry and these services is very easy and tight, so you can adapt this use case to whatever your needs are. We have a repository here where we have an automated build workflow using GitHub Actions, and that pushes to this artifact registry in our Google Cloud project. So let's now take this image and deploy it to Kubernetes Engine. For ease of demonstration, we're going to use an autopilot cluster on Google Kubernetes Engine, which does not require the management of nodes, but note that the same principles apply whether you're deploying to standard or autopilot GKE. When creating the cluster, we can largely stick with the defaults, at least for this demonstration. However, know that there are several ways you can configure your own clusters. This cluster will serve as the platform or foundation for our deployment of the Docker container that we've defined in our GitHub repository. Now that our cluster has been created, let's go ahead and create some resources to deploy to it. We'll use a pretty traditional setup here, using Kubernetes resources and specifically leveraging our image in artifact registry and a service. I'm going to bring in the code here and we'll just note a couple of things. The use of a load balancer type for the service and the use of a placeholder for the Google project in our image. Now let's update our GitHub Actions workflow and examine, step-by-step, step, how to deploy this container. As covered in our previous video, we'll configure the gCloud CLI and then use it to push the Docker image. We really just need one additional step here, which is deploying the Docker image using the resources file and ensuring that we have the required placeholder resolution. Let's call this deploy to GKE. And again, we want to pass that Google project secret as an environment variable. We'll need to configure our kubectl client using the get credentials command. We should also note that based on recent updates to the kubectl project, and specifically the removal of provider specified code, We'll also need to install the GKE gCloud auth component when setting up our Google Cloud CLI. This will ensure that the get credentials command works correctly. Next up, let's perform a find and replace operation for that project placeholder that we alluded to earlier. We're going to replace Google project with the actual value for the Google project from our secrets. And we'll show you in just a moment where those secrets live in GitHub Actions. In this final step, we simply need to use kubectl apply on this resources file. Let's add this workflow here and then make sure that our permissions and our GitHub Actions setup support this workflow. In our GitHub repository, we previously set up a workflow for the build. We can just highlight again some of the key concepts, specifically in the settings, where we need to make sure that we have our GitHub Actions project and credentials secrets set up. These will be used by our workflows. Beyond that, we just need to put all of our workflow files in a GitHub slash workflows directory. For those secrets, we will use the Google Cloud Project ID, which we can grab from the console. For the service account application credentials, we'll generate a JSON key. 
We can create a key in JSON format and use the contents of that key for our GitHub action secret for the application credentials. Again, that's in the settings where we can set up repository secrets with the new repository secret button. Now, our service account needs to have permissions not only for the artifact registry, but also for our Kubernetes engine cluster. If we go to IAM and grant access, we can put in our service account and assign it the role of Kubernetes engine developer. We're setting this at the project level here, but you could consider adding additional IAM conditions around, for example, resource names and constraints. With the permissions set, we can test our full workflow. As our deployment will run on any pushes to the main branch, we should be able to trigger this deployment with a push. Back in our repository, let's check out that workflow. We should probably give it a better name as we named both the build and the build and deploy workflows the same thing. In any case, by going into our configuration and viewing runs, we can see our deployment workflow. Often, you will want to combine building and deploying into a single workflow because the deployment is dependent on having the image published and ready. You can have that prerequisite explicitly captured if you use sequential steps to build before deploying. Once our deployment runs successfully, we can check it in the Kubernetes engine page where we'll find our services. The service endpoint creation will take a few moments. After a minute or two, this will enter a healthy state as the pod spins up. In our services, we'll now have an external IP that we can click to view our Hello World image in the browser. We'll share all the code in the video description and we'll also monitor the comments for any questions. Thank you for watching and please enjoy responsibly.